Hi, I'm Paul and thanks for watching another of my Power Apps videos. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at PDFs and the PDF Viewer and specifically working with the PDF Viewer uh, when we're on Azure SQL DB. So in this video I'm going to be storing PDFs uh, in Azure SQL DB itself, so not storing a link to them, storing the actual PDF in Azure SQL DB uh, and then I'm going to be having a look at um, a couple of ways that we can bring that data back from Azure SQL DB and display it in our PDF viewer. Uh, so this is um, follows on from some similar concepts to a video I did earlier where we were looking at uh, images, uh, photos and uh, different ways of working with them. Uh, and in that video we found that if we were able to convert the image file from binary into base64 text, sorry I know that sounds scary but I'll, I'll talk you through it, um, if we're able to convert the, the, uh, the photos into base64 text then they display much more quickly and much more reliably in Power Apps. It's a format that Power Apps seems to be much happier with. So we're going to do some similar sort of comparisons here but rather than with photos with PDF files and also generally we're going to be showing you how you can store a PDF in Azure SQL DB and then display it again um, because uh, watching a few blog posts people have been having some difficulty with this PDF viewer when they're trying to display files that they've got stored on say SharePoint or OneDrive or whatever. So let's have a little look. Um, so I'm just going to bring this up. So over on the left here I've just got a straightforward add picture control. Um, I've changed it to say PDF rather than picture but trust me this is just the straightforward add picture control and what you'll notice with the add picture control is when you click on it although it encourages you to select an image file by only showing you image files um, as the default you can open that drop down and say show me all files so you can actually store or, or choose any kind of file you like including PDF files. So we can do that, which is great, and then we can save those PDF files uh, and in or whatever file it is, and in this case we're going to save it to SQL. So let's just have a look at what's behind this SQL button. This um, add picture control, the only thing I have changed is picture to PDF, you know, and that's just a, a text label. So that's the only change there. So here um, this is our uh, save button. So what we're doing here is we're saying save whatever file I selected up to my SQL Server, Azure SQL DB. So I've got a table in Azure SQL DB called image test in my demo uh, schema. So demo.imagetest. And because I'm appending a file, I've got to use this defaults instruction. Okay. Uh, and one of the defaults is just an incrementing photo ID, so we're going to have an incrementing ID number. So all we're going to get in our table is the next ID number and the uh, binary details of the file that you have selected. And then what we're doing here is we're saying, OK, to the field which I've called photo is image. Sorry, I haven't changed all these to say PDF. I'm just using the same table, the same setup as from the, the previous demo that I did. Um, so we're putting it into, this is an image field type, so we're putting it in an image field and we're just uploading uh, what we have selected in our add picture control. So that's nice and straightforward. So that's how we can easily get our PDF files in. So there are some PDF files that I have already loaded. Um, so we'll just show you here. So we've got some PDF files already in there. As I say, there's an incrementing ID, um, and then uh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually showing you the size of the, the PDF file. So we'll have a little look at the differences um, in how long it takes to load bigger and, and smaller PDF files. So there we go. So now, what have I got here? Okay, this uh, PDF viewer is tied to my image test table um, and it's going to bring back the data from the image 
field. So no manipulation at all. I'm just using the save button to save uh, the PDF file into my field in SQL Server, which happens to be an image field. And then we're going to bring down the data uh, again to display in this PDF viewer. So what I've got on here is um, I've just got, let's hit the play button for a moment, I've just got a text box here so I can specify the ID number of the file that I want to bring down okay and then that will display in this PDF viewer if I tick the little box on here. So what I wanted to be able to do was to um, be able to tick uh, to display uh, things one at a time so I can be sure when I'm testing for performance um, you know that, that I'm not bringing down both bits of information and, and, and there's some kind of interference going on. So what I can do here is I can say right just populate this one um, control, this one PDF viewer and then I can compare that with how long it takes to uh, populate this second PDF viewer. So what's going on with the second PDF viewer? Well this one is tied to uh, not my image test table but a view called image test convert and the image test convert view takes my binary data from the image column from the image field and it's going to turn it into text data varchar max data uh, of this base uh, 64 um, text string type okay so let's have a look at how that all works. So we'll just hit the play button. So uh, PDF uh, or uh, photo ID 33 is one of the smaller ones uh, from here so we'll, we'll use that one to start with. So I'm going to start by hitting the button uh, on the option to show this from the image field so this is with no manipulation or anything going on so I'm going to hit the button, I'm going to hit my little timer just to start counting up. Now you'll see activity across the top of the screen, that's it pulling the data down and that's going to take a few seconds and now, so that was seven seconds, and now it's going to start trying to render that data. So it's taking it, let's have a little look, about, mm, about ten seconds or so I would guess, so it was about seven seconds to pull in the data uh, and then you saw the activity cease uh, so it's pulled all the data in at that point uh, and then we had to wait about 10 seconds for Power Apps to take that um, binary data and um, convert it, do whatever it has to do internally to make it display in this PDF viewer. Okay, so um, let's just stop and restart to, to reset that timer. So now I'm going to do the same thing here and let's see what happens uh, when we've converted our data to Varchar Max and I'll show you how we're going to convert it on the SQL side in a moment but remember this is the one where we've done a conversion in SQL Server so we're sending the data down in a different format, a format that Power Apps is happier with. So let's hit the button and hit the timer as well. So it should take about the same length of time to pull the data down, maybe slightly longer because this um, data URI format is a little bit more verbose so nine seconds to pull down the data but only three seconds to render it okay so much much faster at rendering that data when it comes down in the correct format or in the preferred format okay so let's show you what's going on on the SQL Server side so again this is a, a recap of what we saw in the last um, the last video uh, and again I'll put the link to the last video uh, in the description because these sort of build on one another. So what we're doing here then is we're using this um, JSON uh, instruction, JSON JavaScript object notation I believe it stands for um, and that's just a converter which is in uh, SQL Server, uh, newer versions of SQL Server at least uh, and that is going to allow us to turn our data from this uh, image field into varchar max and it's converting it into this base64 format. The other little thing we need to do is once we've done this um, sort of from open JSON and, and done this um, business here where we've converted this into our string data we need to prefix that string data 
with something that tells us a little bit about it, a little bit of a description of what that data is. Now, interestingly, you can see here that I had changed it from JPEG to PDF, but I'm going to change it back to JPEG again because it appears that it doesn't actually seem to matter. So you can actually just use the same, exactly the same query as we were using when we were working with images, when we're using with PDF files as well. So let's just uh, do that again down here. Let's let's pick another one. Let's go to um, uh, what have we got? Back to number thirty-two, perhaps. Uh, and then this is going to. You can see it pulling in the data for ID thirty-two now. So once that finishes pulling in the data, it should then start rendering again. Okay, taking a while to pull that in. Okay, but now once the data has come in, bang, we've just got a couple of seconds there for the, for the thing to actually render and display. So from my admittedly limited testing, but so far it, it looks like um, doing that conversion in SQL Server to change the data from image to uh, varchar max holding this base64 URI data which happens for you all automatically when you're messing around with this um, for JSON auto that does the conversion for you uh, you get much much faster rendering over here okay so um, what have I got over on the far left then so this is one that I was trying to uh, hook up to uh, so a PDF viewer I was trying to hook up to SharePoint or OneDrive to try and see a comparison between SharePoint, OneDrive uh, and SQL Server. Um, I'm a little bit limited for time, I haven't actually been able to get it to display the file in the PDF viewer but it will do this open in my browser instead so if we have a click on there we can see um, in terms of, of timing it's probably actually slightly quicker for you to start seeing the first page of your PDF uh, when you're working this way. Um, I believe what's happening here is once the first page of data has downloaded then it can start rendering and showing you the first page of your document. If you had a long document and you were trying to scroll through quickly then you would find that you were waiting for the later pages to populate with the data excuse me so when you're working by pulling the data from a from a web source like um, SharePoint or uh, or OneDrive if you can get it to work um, then you're probably going to start seeing the pages quicker uh, in the control in Power Apps uh, because it can start rendering when when only part of the file has downloaded compared to what we see when we are working with SQL Server where it's got to download the whole of the file first and then it will render all of it. So on SQL Server you've got to wait for everything to be ready and then everything is visible. Um, I believe, because I can't quite get it working yet, but on the likes of uh, SharePoint and, and OneDrive what you're going to find is that once the first page has loaded you can view that but then you may be waiting for subsequent pages to load if you want to if you want to scroll further through the document so just some things to um, to keep in mind there of course it's going to depend on uh, on the requirements for your solution um, I quite like where I can to keep everything in one place so rather than go for a solution where I'm keeping most of my data in Azure but then I'm storing a link to my PDF and my PDF is somewhere else I quite like the idea of just having everything in SQL okay everything is all in one place then um, and it makes it a little bit easier to um, to manage things uh, so if you don't mind that you've got to wait for the whole document uh, to download or the whole file to download before you start rendering then um, I think I think SQL is good and if you don't want to make your wait uh, sorry make your users sit and wait for your files to render then have a go at using this uh, for json auto command to convert your data from the 
image data type, the binary image data type that um, Power Apps doesn't seem to work with very well, and convert it into this base64 URI data type, which, um, as I say, in my testing uh, on these PDFs, the PDFs are rendering in about a third the time they do when you use this method, the base64, rather than the binary method. Okay, well I'll probably do some um, some follow-up videos when I've had more time to play around with this PDF stuff, but um, I found this sort of interesting and I thought I would put it out there for you guys to start uh, experimenting with, so you know, if you do get a chance to, to play around with it, then um, please pop something in the comments down below the YouTube video. Let me know how you got on. Okay, great. Have a fantastic day.